Here's a bit of a conundrum for you. Let's assume that you have a game. It doesn't have native Steam controller support. It doesn't have gamepad support. In the case of Portal, it does. But bear with me, because in situations where it doesn't have that, how exactly do you set up the Steam controller so that it can interact in a way that makes it easy to both read the button prompts and also be able to use the fluid motion of the Steam controller. Maybe this even applies in cases where the mouse and gamepad just don't cooperate and you don't want to sacrifice that mouse movement. So what I've done is I've attempted to come up with a notation that you can use in order to get the Steam controller to communicate to you what ex what buttons exactly you want it to press, even if you are only using a, a keyboard and mouse type of setup. And so here's what I've come up with. Let's look at the raw version first of all. We'll, we'll save this one for a little bit later. There we go. And what you're looking at is what I call descriptive keys. I have two versions, one with the stick for movement and one with the trackpad for movement. I'm showing you the trackpad because that's the one that I'm familiar with. And what I've done is since if you're playing with the keyboard and mouse, you need to have something that that fits, but if with the or rather that fits with uh, using the mouse and keyboard in both of your hands to be able to reach everything. But with the Steam controller, since you can set your you can set your control scheme all over the keyboard and it can still be comfortable in your hands, I figured why not try setting up a control scheme specifically designed for the Steam controller. And so that's what I've done here. And I've tried to make it so that the keys adequately communicate where exactly on the Steam controller rather than where exactly on the keyboard that they are. So first of all, we have the bumpers here. I decided to use these square parentheses because if you look on a regular keyboard, let me just uh, pull mine up here. Uh, have that upside down. But you can see that on that, whichever one of those that you're using, you're going to be winding up with a parenthesis, whether the whether the game shows the the top ones or the bottom ones. Normally, it's going to show the bottom, but the point is that what that does is that makes it easy for for me to be able to tell. Okay, so I'm looking for for something that's shaped kind of like the bumper, and then with the bumper. It's also going to communicate whether it's on the left or the right side, based on uh, whether it's an open parenthesis or a closed parenthesis. And so that way, when I, when I see one of those parentheses come up, I know, oh, my configuration wants me to push one of the bumper buttons. And I did something similar with the grips. Um, there wasn't really as solid uh, of an alternative that I could find that I could guarantee would have the right the right associations here. Initially I was thinking of using the greater than and less than signs since they looked like an area arrows, but I came to realize, oh wait, that's going to be the uh, that's probably going to show up as a period and keyboard on and a comma on a lot of games. And I couldn't use the arrow keys because as you can see, if you pull up the the configuration here, I've already got the arrow keys trying to tell me the movement. So I did that so that I could free up the WASD, even though those are are normally kind of easy to follow. I just wanted to make sure here, let me get the camera back on the controller here, since you don't really need to see the keyboard. But you can see for the face buttons, I wanted to make sure that they came up and actually said which face button it was that you need to push. So A is of course A, B is of course B, 
y is y and x is x to, to make things as simple as possible. So since a is included in the WASD, uh, I needed to sacrifice that and move over to the um, the arrows over here in order to indicate movement. And that, that's still a very intuitive way to, to be able to perceive movement once those uh, keys come up. So you may be wondering a little bit why Z and S on the grips here. The reason for that is because um, I had already used L and R for the trackpads down here, which are also easy to determine on left and right. But for the grips, I still needed something else that would be able to indicate a direction. And you can see that the Z and the S look kind of familiar. Uh, one of them's curved and one of them's not, but even more importantly, Z is facing left and S is facing right. And the unique thing about those letters in particular is that they're both going to look the same, whether they're capitalized or whether they're lowercase. And since I was already sacrificing WASD, I was able to use the S over here. So that, that wound up culminating in my descriptive keys configuration, where the whole idea is that uh, rather than just having something that matches with a default controller scheme or something that maps to a gamepad that it would map to keys on the keyboard and mouse that describe the button that they're associated with on the steam controller rather than describing uh, where on the keyboard they are because that information is a is a little bit less useful when, once you're using the, the Steam controller. So let me take a look and show you with uh, Portal, first of all, how this is going to work. I'm going to open up the configuration that I had before because I did slightly change it here. Uh, that's not the right one. I'll, I'll, I'll come back once I have launched the once I have launched this thing for you. So just a moment here. All right, thank you for that. So here we are in game. Uh, let me show you, I, I made some slight changes. Um, I wanted it so that I would have a mode shift on the left grip, I think, because that's what it seems to be trying to say there it's yes on the d-pad here what what this does is it makes it so that um, currently I'm using analog emulation on the on the directional keys and that was messing things up when I crouched so I wanted to set it up that way so as far as the games concerned one of the things that you have to do a little bit differently when you're using this particular configuration is make sure that you set up the keys actually inside of the the game's own configurator. So you can see that I've already done that. Jump is set to the right pad, as you can see by R there. Duck is, I, I can see that that's the curvy one that's facing left, so it's going to be the left, left grip, which matches with uh, what I have in the configuration there for my my ducking workaround. And I left the the triggers to to be their respective mouse things. I figure most of us are going to be are going to have used that notation for long enough that it, it's going to be kind of second nature. So I didn't need to worry about that. And it makes it a lot easier to work around in in menus. Um, I didn't really change much with a quick save, but I definitely could. Actually, yeah, let, let's go ahead and and set something up quick. Make sure that not using anything here. I want to quick save. I'm going to push B. And if I want to quick load, I'm going to press Y. And so you can see. Quick save set to B. Quick load is set to Y. If I want to pause the game, it currently says pause, but you know, it works well enough with with just the start menu usually. 
so I'm not really going to to change that and everything here should be more or less uh, workable at this point so if we can open up the game I'm going to actually start with a new game here and you should start seeing button prompts once we get into into far enough in the game and you should be able to figure out exactly which button it is that it's associated with just because the keys are describing them that is a really annoying radio so I'm gonna try and ignore it right there go ahead and dump these things in here while I'm hi GLaDOS thank you and we are now ready to begin the test proper. Before Thank you, you're so polite, however, GLaDOS. Please in mind that although fun and learning are the primary goals of all enrichment center activities, serious injuries may occur for your own safety and the safety of others. Please refrain from... Turn back. The portal will open in three, two, one. So yeah. That, that took a little bit, bit of time, but you can see, I can move around, and it's really fluid because I'm, I'm actually using the, the mouse and keyboard here rather than just trying to emulate the gamepad things. If you do need help with uh, emulating the gamepad, you can get a lot of use out of the mouse joystick. I'll, I'll put a card in the top right so that you can get to my tutorial on how to make use of that. But as you can see, we've got our first prompt right here, and it says S to pick up an object. Now remember, the curve is referring to the, the grips that I have right here, and that one is facing right, so I know that it needs to be the right grip. And sure enough, that does work. Excellent. And I can drop an object by pressing it again. Lock after completing each test. First, however, note the incandescent particle field across the exit. This aperture science Guess what, GLaDOS? I've decided you aren't the boss of me. I'm not looking at that, that at that grill instance, at all. I'm also going to take the, the block off the button. And we're going to say that that's it for now. Thank you for watching, guys. This is Leo Damascus with the Steam Controller Fan Club, and I'll see you in the next club meeting. Take care, guys.